Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to this presentation, which is part of an ongoing Goose webinar series uh, exploring aspects of global sustained ocean observing. Uh, I'm Albert Fisher. I'm the director of the Global Ocean Observing System Program Office, headquartered here at uh, IOC and UNESCO. We have Dennis Cheng Seng here as well from uh, headquarters. And for the next hour, we'll start with an approximately 30-minute presentation from Mathieu Belbeoc. Mathieu is the lead of JCOMOPS, and to unpack a double acronym, uh, JCOMOPS is the Joint WMO-IOC Technical Commission for Oceanography and Marine Meteorology, that's JCOM, Observing Program Support Center, OPS, based in uh, Brest, France. So JCOMOPS provides technical support uh, and uh, for the implementation and the operation of numerous global-scale uh, in-situ observing networks. And it's funded entirely by voluntary contributions of organizations uh, from member states of WMO and IOC who are contributing to the work of these different networks that Mathieu will tell you about. After the presentation, we'll conduct a question and answer session by chat, and I'll moderate and select and ask those questions verbally. Uh, the chat window is already open. You can either use the chat window or the question window, uh, your choice. Uh, to ask questions, and uh, you can start during the presentation if you'd like to ask clarifying questions. We're recording this session as well as all the Goose webinars, and a link to the recording will be posted on the Goose webpage, and you'll be able to find it also on our YouTube channel, where you can find all of the old webinars. Mathieu, I'll turn it over to you for the presentation. Okay, thank you, Albert. Well, thank you for organizing those webinars and giving us opportunity to link with our community. Um, so I'll introduce uh, briefly uh, through a presentation our activities and the information we manage. And the second half will be a live demonstration uh, on our web tools. Um, so, um, Jacob Maps was introduced by Albert. Uh, I'd just like to recall as a start that we are a team of six people. So I'm presenting the work and some of it is a long, long run work. Uh, of a number of colleagues, uh, Long Jiang from China working on drifters and ocean sites, uh, Magali working on ships, Antonin, our IT and chief, Emanuela, our physical oceanographer working on science and communication issues, and Thomas, later still in Toulouse, working hard on the web. Um, so all these people are working together to promote, uh, optimize, monitor the different elements of the observing system. Okay, so that's our terms of reference. Jacob Ops uh, is assisting at the heart of the observing system in the implementation of the different elements uh, with day-to-day -day interaction with our community. Um, we work a lot uh, on the exchange of metadata, the metadata we need for the monitoring of the programs and metadata that are needed also by the uh, 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 programs themselves when they serve the data. Uh, and uh, in the end, we want to develop a kind of real-time monitoring system uh, to check the pulse of the goose uh, and improve the overall effectiveness of the system. So we collect metadata. We, are, we can be seen as a big metadata center. Uh, mainly, our information is coming directly from the operator, the people doing the day-to-day -day work uh, deploying instruments, organizing cruises, um, maintaining the different instruments, etc. We take the information as a source, um, and then we enrich this information through links with different global data centers, with the GTS uh, of WMO to get statistics on observation. We also have some links with some satellite telecommunication providers, such as CLS, for the real-time location of those elements. And we also relay some users feedback on that work quality uh, to data producers. Um, so this uh, gathering is mainly machine to machine, but there are still some manual interaction, mainly by platform operators. So all this information is going into a relational database uh, with common concept, common entities. Uh, we try to unify our reference table and very important, we have a unique identifier for every element. Um, and we have been tasked uh, uh, recently by WMO and JCOM to allocate unique identifiers to every element of uh, the observing system in the ocean. 
Uh, and finally, all these metadata are controlled and adjusted when needed by experts, so the different technical coordinators. Uh, uh, so all that is fueling, in the end, an autonomous system that is checking these metadata in almost real time, checking uh, the status of each element of each platform uh, all along its life cycle, from the planning to the last uh, 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 distribution of data. So this database is enriched through this routine analysis tools, including some GIS-based analysis. We have a number of uh, services to uh, monitor the flow, the drift of some element in some uh, uh, particular zones, like the exclusive economic zone, for example, or under the ice, etc. So oh, we have a lot of uh, spatial analysis made through, through those GIS services, and our system is hosted in CLS. Uh, in uh, in the cloud in Toulouse still uh, on a number of servers that are pretty well uh, monitored on a 24 hours and seven day basis uh, with a proper redundancy. So in the end, those metadata that have been controlled and rich uh, uh, and that evolve hourly uh, are distributed through a set of uh, services and products or tools. The first one is our set of maps, uh, our maps providing the uh, authoritative status of every observing system. So you have seen probably these kind of maps in a number of, uh, of uh, meetings uh, of the goose. Uh, we also have developed a set of performance indicators to monitor the health of the observing systems uh, through a different uh, number of, uh, of uh, uh, areas like the implementation, the data flows, the instrumentation, etc. And also, we 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 having some um, API machine to machine uh, ways to share our metadata. Some are still under development, some are already uh, uh, there. And in the end, we have also a website where you can access most of this information uh, uh, that I'm going to demonstrate right now. So, just to recall before that. Our websites are not really websites, they are web applications. So they are a little more complex uh, as a first use than a classic uh, uh, web uh, website. Uh, they are dedicated primarily to the implementer of the Goose Network, so the different panels, steering teams, data teams, program manager, uh, uh, principal investigators, data managers, engineers, manufacturers, etc. All the community involved in the implementation, but also to the governance, Goose, JECOM, the international organization, and different member states involved in uh, uh, oceanography and marine meteorology. Uh, also, we wish to, to uh, provide information to a larger scientific audience that want to have an informa information on the observing system without any network uh, driven perspective, but uh, through a cross-network or variable-oriented perspective. We want also uh, uh, to provide information to larger public and do some outreach, and uh, so that we can promote the different observing system and the integrated uh, system in the end. So we have individual network website, and that's where you, you, you would have to start. Argo, DBCP, SOT, GoShip, OceanSides, GLOSS. So Jacob Ops integrated one is uh, it's pretty hard to build up because uh, uh, we need a m common set, a minimum, uh, um, uh, minimum common denominator in terms of metadata to be able to, to really integrate our web services. Uh, and that's what we try to do also on a regional base where we're involvement in the Atlantos project, in Tipos, etc. So let's go to, the, to this tutorial. Um, trying to open the web. Okay, so I can just reload that. So that's where you land when you go on Jacob Ops. Okay, here you are. So first you have to check in which environment you are. Here I choose www.jacobops.org and you can see on the bottom right that there's a set of links and icons for the different websites. So make sure to know in which environment you are. Maybe in the future, we could have only one JCOM Ops. But for now, each observing system is evolving at its speed. Uh, and we follow that uh, uh, slowly uh, to develop our, our services. So uh, let's see quickly the, the interface. It's a dashboard. 
Um, you may have some uh, pop-up windows coming at the beginning uh, that haven't reproduced there, but let's let's imagine we, we close them. So you see that you can log in on this website first. And the login uh, basically allow you to do a few things. Uh, the most important is that it will allow you to write information into the system. Uh, to register your float, mooring, deployment, your GoShip cruises, etc. But it will allow you also to save a certain dashboard. For example, if you're interested in the MedC observing system, you can configure this, this, this website, this web application, to monitor exclusively that and save it into your preferences. We'll see that a little later. Uh, you have a few notifications on the right of the system when our colleagues are uh, uh, registering a number of platforms. We see that India is working right now, uh, doing some uh, deployment plans for Argo. Uh, you have a quick uh, search engine there where you could type any name to get a quick uh, uh, phone number uh, to contact someone or to get information on uh, one particular ship if you want, or to get information, of course, on a particular platform uh, this one I could put uh, so a quick search engine that can be uh, that can be practical to check to check quickly a number of information in this community uh, finally on the top you have the main elements so here you see on the left your current sample I'll explain that in a, in a moment and you can search in this big database you can register element in this big database you can visualize through maps and you can visualize some uh, performance indicators. So um, <clears throat> I think the first, the first thing we can do as a test to show you the spirit of the website, um, you have to, to understand the concept. Concept is pretty simple. You need to load this system with a set of elements of the global ocean observing system, your perspective uh, uh, on the goose. You define it first, <clears throat> and then when you, when you have uh, 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 put in memory this list of observing system elements, uh, the whole website, the whole dashboard will work on this uh, um, uh, sample of elements. So let's start with a search. Uh, we are searching here some platforms. Our platforms, our semantic platform is a float, a drifters, uh, uh, a moored buoy, uh, a weather station on board a ship, all the elements, uh, the instrument packages that are sending data. So uh, I, I prepare a few a few set of, uh, of queries, try to illustrate you uh, uh, what we can do. So I'm going first to switch to the Argo program. Uh, so I'm switching the website because I'm, I will just take a look what's going on with Argo in the Southern Ocean. That's my first, uh, I would say, uh, uh, window on the goose. So I'm in Argo. Uh, I want to see. Oh, I have to close all that. Okay. So I have to see everything that was deployed in the Southern Ocean since the beginning of Argo. <clears throat> Seconds. Okay, so then my table of elements is being loaded. Normally, so we have about 600 elements that have been deployed there. So here I have, uh, uh, you see on the top top left, my sample uh, uh, on which I'm working now. So from this list, it is more or less like Excel. I can move columns. I can remove and add some columns and some more metadata. I can export that in different format. Uh, uh, but the first thing I want to do is basically check on a map uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the result of my query. So here we are in the Southern Ocean. Normally. OK. So this take a few. Second to load. All right. So while waiting the, the map to load, of course, uh, when you make a demonstration, you always take some risks. But 
Um, this table, once loaded, gives you a, a possibility to make uh, to have an overview on your sample. So Argo in the Southern Ocean, that was our starting point. So let's see who is working on Argo in the Southern Ocean. Uh, uh, we can see quickly, I hope, the number of, uh, of countries that are interested in this in this region, uh, uh, the different um, <clears throat> ships, for example, that have been used uh, to implement the Southern Ocean Argo observing system. Uh, 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 okay, then we can take a look. The, our, our map is really, really in trouble. Mm. Okay. Okay, now I have an empty. <laughs> okay, it's coming. So, Argo Southern Ocean, we can have access to all the deployment per year through different charts uh, uh, that we can uh, refine through different, through different ways. Uh, um, and see the resulting data uh, or individual elements that have been uh, operating, uh, uh, either split by countries or just as a single as a single time scale. It's a single plot. So the website has decided to be a bit slow today <clears throat> and challenging me. Okay, so. Perhaps not uh, all many people online are online as well. Yes, no, no, but it's uh, we need to risk at some point. We cannot show video forever. So let's 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 continue. Um, what is important? All those charts, and I won't be able to show you everything. You can export them. You can export the data below them, and you can also embed them. And I show you later how how to do that. Basically, when you see this symbol on the website, you can embed. So this code will take everything. The query underlying the number of platforms, get that in real time and put you this plot on your own website if you want. So I wanted to go on the map at some point and I hope it will reply now. Hmm? Yes, I can have another map. Uh, so we don't have time to, to, to wait. Um, so here we have all latest location. If we see points in the north, it's because they have been using some uh, reusing some Argos identifier, I guess. Um, let's take a look to one other other query because I wanted to, for example, to add uh, the age. So Argo, Southern Ocean. Let's check if we have some platforms that are close to eight years. Yes, we have a few one in the south. One is still active here from UK. And we can take a look to the track or to the observation below. Uh, OK, that one can take on, a, on another projection. And see this nice Argo float uh, that I've been traveling around the Southern Ocean. So that was the first, uh, first little, uh, little demonstration on what sample. I could now switch, and um, you understood the concept, if I'm changing the request now to anything else, all the windows that are open there, my statistics, my map, everything will change with the query. Uh, so I'm going now to, uh, to have a kind of integrated perspective through Jacob Maps, not working only with floats, but with all the rest. So same way, I'm defining my sample. And I, I want to take a look, for example, to everything that is operational from Japan. Pick up, could pick up any country. I haven't explained you one very important thing is this status. All the metadata in our system are somehow static, is not the right wording. But the status, uh, you re re might recall in the uh, beginning of the presentation, the status of each platform is calculated in almost real time by the system itself, based on the metadata available, based on the observation available. So when you say 
I want to see all the operational platform from Japan. It is as of now. You can go in the past, but then you have to remove the status. The status is really as of now. So what is available? What is the Japanese contribution uh, uh, to the goose right now? Okay, about 300 platforms. Let's see what we have there. We should have a number of different elements, some subsurface profiler from Argo, some ship weather station, quite a bit, and some rings, and probably a few, a few surface drifters and, and ASAP atmospheric profilers. So exactly the same way, you have a table, you have a map, maybe this time it will work, because I have a number of things to show you on this interactive map. Yes, um, I had some old layer there. So you see the Japanese active fleet. And again, a simple click there on the embed give you this application that you can embed and, and, and have, it, have it working in standalone version. Uh, an important function is that you are able so you have to understand in the platform there, you have, we have different ways, different geometry for each element. You have the first location of an instrument. You have all the observation provided along its pathway. And you have the latest location. Here I'm displaying the latest location. And I can duplicate those layers uh, um, and also change, change the symbology myself if I want to pick another color and to make another query into the system. Okay, so I can do that now. I save that, and I can show, and I, and I can show, for example, something uh, something different. Um, I wanted to show you something about cruises, so I could pick up, uh, for example, um, some analysis network. Let's take, for example, the density of uh, of an Argo network. I could take the drifter too, but uh, just to show you that. Okay, here we are. We have the real time density, coverage, uh, uh, or we can highlight the gaps. So basically, we need to put instrument where we have colors. If it's transparent, it's there's enough element. So I'd like to know now which cruises are going to happen there, where, or on which I could deploy my instrument. So I, on the same way, I'm loading now a sample of cruises. By default, I think there are the, the next cruises that are loaded. But uh, let's pick up, for example, any cruise that will start beginning of this year. And I'm loading on the same way a table of cruises, and I can export it, etc., on the same way. And I can display it and try to find how I could fill that gap. For example, here, I can see that I have uh, one ship. I don't know that one, but maybe the Revel is going there this year uh, in the spring. So it might be a good opportunity. So we have slowly started to, to, to have some good information about cruise plan, which is a very labor intensive task. Our ship coordinator is working hard on it right now. Um, I could also refine my research of cruises. For example, if I need to do some um, uh, some calibration, some validation, if I want, for example, to have my element deployed along a GoShip cruises, uh, I just add the class GoShip reference there, and it will filter all the cruises on the GoShip reference one only. Mathieu, can I interrupt with a, a couple of questions that have popped up? Yes. Uh, and, uh, which are, which yes. are relevant to the demonstration right now. So uh, just uh, from what's in front of us on the screen, Peter Pearson has asked, what's the source of the cruise information? OK, good. Uh, the source of cruise information is uh, very varied. For example, all the GoShip cruises are managed by the GoShip steering team. So it's a long time scale, huh, decade. Uh, but all the cruise plans are in the system through the GoShip committee and through their coordinator that is working in JCOMAPS. We have a set of cruises that we load from point-to-point -point connection with the different uh, countries. So the ship coordinator has basically established linkage with the major uh, research vessels operator in the world. And slowly, we find ways with them to get the information. Uh, we are also notified directly by our committee, some colleagues like the the latest uh, cruise from the from the Mirai was an example. So uh, um, it's hard work, uh, but it starts since a couple of years to show some uh, some progress. 
and also the okay. people that are entering their deployment plans, our community, either uh, uh, on ships, on floats, on drifters, they can, with a few clicks, add their crews uh, before they go deploy. So if, if they want to deploy an instrument there, uh, uh, they will simply register quickly their crews, need to be logged in for that. So they will take their, their network down city map. Okay, I'll do it like that quickly, but just add a cruise like this and save it, providing a name, a start date, an end date, something uh, uh, something pretty simple. So before doing their planning, they can also save a cruise and they do it uh, slowly and slowly, all the platform operators. And then and Mathieu, another question while we're, while we're in the demo. Um, it's from Nathan Anderson. Uh, you showed how you can embed uh, versions of the map in other websites with a snippet of code. Can you embed a static version of a map, or is it necessary? Will it necessarily update, for example, if a mooring goes online or or inactive? Okay, both. You can update. So I didn't uh, mention those static maps we have. All these static maps, either for Jacob Maps or for any 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 program, you can embed them. You have the permalink, permanent link to that. Uh, you can embed also the viewer, so you can embed a, a, a set of maps. So you would just uh, choose uh, which kind of map you want, uh, which size, etc., and give you the piece of code. But you can also embed the interactive map. And that will be my last demonstration, actually. I'd like to show you uh, uh, the 3D map uh, that we have uh, Developed a while ago, so I'm loading all the op op operational element of Jacob Ops, which is close to eight, nine, ten thousand. I think just to see if the system will support my presentation. So map, I'm taking the interactive map 2.0. It is still under work, and then I'm switching the projection to 3D. I don't let him to load the points. Okay, so here this is all the networks with a 3D viewer. And then you have here an embed function that can tell you, okay, I want all the operational, uh, I want the 3D projection, I want operational platform from, uh, let's say, USA, uh, any chance, and as Nathan has a question, uh, I want it from, uh, where are they? I could even send a list of, but where is Ocean Sites there? Okay, well, I'm not going to check, but I have a link there, and I can just open a new page. Okay. Put my link, and then I can get that real-time monitoring system embedded on any website as a standalone. You can even add your little logo there. And of course, you can filter the list of platforms you want to see there. You can make some, uh, uh, I would say, some animation, some demonstration. You can. Uh, 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 click your waypoints to show one basin and then another and, and then confirm your animation. So my last uh, little test, I just want to show you something that is available for the DBCP. Uh, so the drifters and moorings. It works. Okay. Okay, just to change the symbology because our next, what's next for, for Jagamops in terms of web development, mapping development, is to go to the 3D. Not only showing some nice 3D version of the buoys or moorings, but also dive into the 3D. If I can do that properly, sorry. So use the 3D capacity of this viewer to now discover our ocean, our platforms, our features, our, our 
our world uh, uh, through a 3D map. Uh, so for outreach, for communication, it will be very practical. But there's a whole set of uh, of uh, uh, potential there. And to conclude, uh, you can also add your own uh, your own KML, uh, which is on this map. Where is that? A layer, uh, custom layer. Yes. So I just pick up uh, before. I, uh, I think I will not do that because we, I see the time is uh, is flying. But you can add your own CSV, your own KML on, on this map. Um, and uh, yeah, so my, my message, I can switch back to my presentation for my last slide. Okay. Yeah. How to switch between applications. Okay, I think my. Okay, so just uh, for the improvement, we are continuously improving this uh, this web application. We have also mobile applications that we are putting on the on the store now to be to be uh, widely available. Uh, we're working out on the metadata for sheets, drifters, and moorings because website is nice, but you need to have the metadata ba base below before showing something uh, interesting. We're working hard on our REST API. In particular, a Wagos compliant API for WMO. We're developing synergies and interconnectivities with a number of colleagues. And, and OSMC's AirDAP in the US is one good example. And we want to keep on developing outreach, access greedy data, and, and show also that individual buoy is maybe not the most important, but the most important is that the, the global mapping of the ocean, we do variable per variable. And we need to communicate on those tools and and really what we what we what message to conclude i would like to pass is that first i mean our goal is to build the integrated observing system to build the integrated perspective uh, uh, we can only do it if everyone in this community is putting its little piece of information into the system uh, and if everybody does that the, there's a lot of of potential uh, uh, to mix up uh, uh, ocean sites, cruises, maintenance, or data available with GoShip and Argo, and all those programs together give a lot of uh, added value to the to the system. Uh, we'd like also our community to feedback on these tools. I mean, these tools are meant to be useful for the platform operators, the people working every day with those observing systems. So we want these tools to be their tools. Of course, as coordinator and part of the governance, we use that to report on the efficiency of the programs, but they have to be used every day by the, by, by, by the community, by the operators. So we are looking for feedback. We are looking for cooperation. Uh, as I told you, the, the way it is developed, uh, a lot of this content can be used outside. Uh, we would be also glad to include other tools developed here and there in the system uh, to add slowly different features and, and continue to participate to the uh, I would say the uh, democratization of access of the information of the global ocean observing system element. So that's it. We have a lot of uh, things to create uh, together. So I'll be happy. Uh, we'll be happy to get your your feedback. But uh, first, please all make sure that all the system elements are logged by JCOMOPS. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you also to all the ones that might be listening to that uh, uh, webinar later. So questions, welcome. All right, thanks, Mathieu. We, have, we do have quite a few questions, on, and um, you've, you've talked a lot about the, the metadata and the web tool. But before we jump into the specific questions about, about that demonstration that you've made, I want to ask you some, some questions about the broader work of, of Jacob Ops. And uh, Etienne has asked some, uh, some of those, Etienne Charpentier has asked some of those questions as well. So, of the the staff, the staff members at Jacob Ops, you haven't you mentioned them at the beginning, but there's there's quite a few of them uh, now based in in Brest, and Long is uh, Long Zheng is going to join you shortly. Uh, how much of your time do you spend on managing the metadata, creating the products that you've shown, versus really working directly with the observing networks and direct technical support and helping the implementers improve the observing system? Oh. Difficult question because every of these observing system has a different level of maturity in terms of metadata. 
Some of these networks have metadata format defined, have operators well used to provide this metadata. Some other are defining the format and defining the content. So we have to adapt our effort to all these dif differences and variety. But I would say it's a day-to-day -day work for us to keep in touch with operators, to know uh, and to see um, uh, if the metadata they provided is correct, uh, to help them if something is blocking. There are always little, little things that are blocking. Just five minutes ago, we had some colleagues from India trying to put element into the system. Uh, this was blocking because an Argos identifier, uh, telecommunication identifier was, was used by two platforms at the same time. So, I mean, a lot of little, little things, but day to day, we monitor those metadata so that the information that is there is the best as we can. And tell us a little more about why metadata. Why is it so important to have the metadata? How does it actually help data flow to operational centers and to scientists that are going to try to understand more about the ocean? OK, so I'll show you two things to demonstrate that. Um, OK, of course, the map I want is not there. Uh, let's see that. So first, let's say uh, uh, every observing system need, need to promote, need to, need to communicate outside, but also inside. So one of our, our basic trivial, uh, the first product we have designed uh, about 15 years ago is a simple static map showing the country contribution. Really, today, this is not going to work for me. Come on. I suspect you have to check your web statistics and see what, what the okay. uh, number of people uh, I'm going to squeeze my website. Well, Mathieu, rather than trying to demonstrate it through through a, a web, I mean, why don't you just tell us a little bit about, about how that metadata really helps um, the implementers and, and the community as a whole ensure that the data is flowing into both okay. real-time and delayed mode data systems. OK, you see so a simple map like that. It's showing the international effort implementing drifters and moving arrays. 20, 30 years of history of these programs. Uh, all the black dots means we don't know the country. No. So we cannot even show the international participation if you don't know the simplest of the metadata the country operating. If you, we don't have, for example, the deployment date of each element, we cannot show the yearly effort of member states participating there. We cannot show which ships are critical. So every single metadata, even the trivial one, is a key to show a number of monitoring tools that are critical for program monitoring inside and program monitoring outside. So it's not metadata to gather metadata and be a nice metadata center. If we want metadata, is to show something that is useful, to show gaps, to show participation effort, uh, uh, to show the sensors, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, and so again, metadata, and we have two questions, one from Steve Jones and one from Peter Pearsons about how, how do users get from data, or metadata to the underlying data? And as you develop that connection between metadata and underlying data, do you see a linkage with uh, IODE, which is IOC's uh, uh, International Oceanographic Data and Information Exchange Program. OK, so every of these observing system should have, will have, or has already, for most of them, a kind of global data distribution capacity. Depends. Some are going on the DTS. Some are going to some uh, uh, web-based global data center, like NDBC, Coriolis. Uh, uh, so they all have their global data distribution facility. And of course, they need metadata with that for the data user. And then we're talking again metadata. And some of the metadata we use, we control, we produce, is overlapping definitely with those metadata served uh, 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 with the data. And of course, we work in concert. We are embedded in data team. So we work in the definition of the metadata format and content. But at JCOMOPS, we extract or we work only with what we need to report to uh, 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 governance, to the program, uh, to report 
uh, uh, metadata to report, to make our work of coordination. But there are much more metadata available on the other end uh, at the right place. Uh, but in the end, ideally, <coughs> JCOMOPS metadata uh, that are going to be submitted to WMO YGOS, to WMO Integrated Global Observing System, uh, we are going to serve those this common denominator of metadata to WMO uh, so they can get a proper monitoring of the marine uh, uh, elements. So we're working together. Sometimes we overlap. Sometimes we totally overlap. Sometimes we're in advance. But we are definitely connected uh, to the metadata that will be distributed to users. And we validate it somehow. OK. Let me um, let me ask a question then uh, a little more broadly again about JCOMOPS. Do you have, uh, this is a question from Ruth Farr, do you have title and sea level information available? And where is, if so, where is the data being imported from? OK. <clears throat> so uh, um, all the programs that JCOMOPS is supporting, uh, uh, they have a dedicated expert, a technical coordinator that is working with the steering team, with the operators, um, um, to, 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 to build this information, to share this information, to assemble products, etc. GLOSS uh, uh, is part of our mandate, but we have no dedicated expert working on that. We have a very, very, very tiny funding to take care of GLOSS. We have just started to add that into our system, and we have no metadata. We have just the location of the sea level tag gauges with maybe an operating country. So we have much more work to do to integrate that there. And I know that at IOD, in some other places, there's a lot of information there on GLOSS. But again, we need someone here to take time to work uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, an expertise and, and in the details to integrate GLOSS properly to our system. OK, thanks for that, uh, Mathieu. Um, we have a comment, actually, from uh, Kevin O'Brien around the questions about metadata and how uh, how that actually helps us get to data. Uh, the metadata of a platform is also quite important to track the provenance of observations in order to better understand what and how the observation was collected. Uh, so both the Observing System Monitoring Center that Kevin O'Brien uh, runs and JCOMOP are working better to identify such information for real-time observations, which don't have that much metadata when they're sent out only on the GTS, although that is evolving in time. Um, so another question for you, um, Mathieu, again, a little more, a more general one. Uh, you sit in, you know, you sit at the interface of a lot of different observing systems. You've shown us a lot of examples from Argo, but you're also working with OceanSight, GhostShip, uh, the Data Buoy Cooperation Panel, etc. Um, so you're actually, as a group of, of technical coordinators, you, ha you're, you have a lot of experience about how these uh, observing systems are at different levels of maturity, as you mentioned. How easy is it for you to, to translate some of the um, best practices that you see across the different observing networks and, and propagate them with other networks that may not be using them yet? That's a, that's a very good question, uh, uh, Albert. <clears throat> um, and yes, we do have uh, uh, some uh, um, expertise on the variety of observing systems because we involve every day in different uh, issues or different little teleconference. Uh, um, the thing is that every observing system has some specificities because of the history, because of the implementers that are uh, uh, interesting for the others. Argo has been a very good success, but Argo has to learn also from uh, the operational world to operationalize its system and, and focus on the core array. Ocean sites has probably the most complex sensor package there. So if we manage to uh, uh, handle properly the suite of sensors on an ocean sites mooring, we make huge progress uh, for all the other uh, uh, multidisciplinary elements on floats, on ships, etc. Uh, so different communities, uh, ship weather station on board ships, uh, or very uh, oceanographic scientific research base that's the, the two extreme of the spectrum and in this whole spectrum you have something to learn from everyone and i think our perspective in jcomops is that probably the, the way forward for the for the success for the sustainability of a program is to have uh, maybe the creativity of the research the constant uh, 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 innovation 
and, and rigorous and detailed monitoring of the quality of the performance, but also uh, uh, the operationalization, uh, 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 the sustainability of, uh, of a core array uh, uh, using some uh, uh, routine deployment opportunities or some chart chart having some cruises to be efficient when deploying hundreds of elements per year. So, yes, having uh, some perspective on all these observing systems tell me, like with all member states involved there, you have specificities, you have good everywhere. And that's what working to the international context uh, uh, is interesting. You learn from everywhere. And you mentioned some of the cross network opportunities, such as uh, identifying deployment opportunities on the GoShip network that uh, could be useful for Argo and DBCP. But um, I have a question from Torquil Darup about another uh, cross network potential. Do you advocate collection of bathymetric data from the ship observations team? Uh, well, I mean, that's uh, something we have been uh, listening to at the last SOT session in London uh, last year or a couple of years ago, I don't recall. We had, we had a clear point that bathymetric data were needed. Uh, so we are, we are not promoting it, but I, I suggested to our colleagues in this community to maybe approach JCOM, Goose, or make the bathymetry as a kind of uh, observing system. Because without bathymetry, I mean, you have difficulties in all the other uh, uh, fields, I guess. And it's not uh, visible as an important observing system in the outside. So I think it should promote itself there. But we know that there are some tools that can be set on board ships to register bathymetry data at almost no cost with few constraints. So we are happy to get in touch there, and we are happy to promote that measurements uh, uh, to the different communities. Uh, but again, we need we need to have some kind of day-to-day uh, -day relationship with this uh, program, with the experts there. Uh, uh, that's our way to work. We, we are working in the field. So if we want to work on bathymetry, we need also to, to be in touch with the right people. But we'll promote it, definitely. All right, Matthew, I'm going to keep asking some of the more broad questions that have been um, submitted. So we have another question from Peter Pearsons. Um, you mentioned that uh, the metadata is very important for the management of the observing system, but also selling the capabilities of an observing system and the contributions of different countries. Uh, so specifically, have the JCOM Ops data reporting on member state contributions to ocean observations been used for IOC's Global Ocean Science Report? And is it going to be possible to integrate a more interactive version, possibly, into future Global Ocean Science Report reports? Yes. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I, I'd like to contribute to that. Um, yeah, there are the no already of... in the first edition. OK. No, I mean, what I could say about that is that recently, uh, I've been asked to, to uh, assemble one plot showing the importance of one particular ship in one particular basin. And in a few clicks, I show the plot that without this ship, uh, the implementation of the Atlantic Ocean is in big trouble with just one plot. And it was enough for the uh, 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 decider that requested me that to, to make the promotion and keep having some, uh, some ship time there. So some very simple tools and products can have a lot of uh, a lot, of, a lot of impact sometimes. All right, Mathieu, and I will just add on to that uh, response directly for Peter that uh, the JCOM Ops data, metadata and some of the mapping products were used in the first edition of the Global Ocean Science Report that was uh, released in 2017. And uh, yes, it's a great idea to uh, provide some more interactive products for the future where those kind of interactive products around the status of the observing system and the contributions of the different countries are a core part of uh, JCOM Ops's mission and can be used for those other purposes. Mathieu, I'm going to ask you about another uh, area of responsibility for JCOM Ops entirely, uh, which is quite different. Uh, it's a question from Louise uh, Guetta. Uh, in the case of Argo profiler deployment, who is responsible for advising national authorities when the uh, profilers uh, drift through jurisdictional waters? Is that something that uh, JCOM Ops take part of JCOM Ops takes care of? What's the role of the PI in that? Can you clarify that a little bit? Yes, yes, yes. That's one of the kind of intergovernmental service of JCOM Ops. Uh, some of you uh, may know that 
uh, uh, all float deployment need to be notified to member states. And in particular, uh, for the member states that have requested it for IOC, uh, there's a dozen of these coastal states, actually. They want a kind of proactive warning whenever a float approach uh, their exclusive economic zone. So the ma Jacobus machinery that is monitoring the float drift in real time is generating a reports to the implementers to warn them that their instruments are approaching these area and then they should inform the coastal state of what's going on or they should do, apply their national policy uh, uh, and do what uh, what they advise to do on a national basis so yes we can inform uh, uh, we can we provide the transparency on the system by tracking in real time so we inform everyone including the member states uh, and what i could do in terms of uh, also research there i could quickly search all the platform that have been deployed let's say the last since last year in a particular exclusive economic zone or in a particular area of the ocean so i could take for example where is the economic zones of Alpikeni sovereignty? Uh, let's say the French Republic, which is a pretty big EZ. So I could just ask, and I could build a full monitoring system just on this EZ. So we have no no problem to to generate reports, and we do it uh, 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 each time one of these float is reaching those those areas. But we could develop on the same way other reports and inform a scientist that is interested in the Bay of Bengal, for example. Uh, 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 such scientists could build in a few click a monitoring system of the Bay of Bengal and be notified on any element entering there or in any polygon. Exactly the same machinery behind. Thanks, Mathieu. And that's quite an, from the IOC perspective, that's quite an important responsibility that JKMOPS takes on for the member states is that uh, EEZ uh, notification uh, system. Um, coming back to the, the different observing networks and the different things that they're asking you for, how, how do you get that feedback and the direction from the observing networks and in particular on what tools they're using the most out of JKMOPS? It's, it's a difficult question. Um, I mean, we had feedback and, and to get feedback first, we need to have our coordinator, so myself for Argo and Long for DBCP, to have also a, a, a long communication and, and, and interaction with the operators. Uh, uh, the maturity of this website for the Argo part, for example, is the result of a couple of years of close interaction and regular uh, uh, little webinar with a few, with a few colleagues. Uh, um, the machine is there, the engine is there, it's very flexible, but we need to tune it a little bit uh, uh, to make it useful for operators. So I think now we have developed a nice tool. Uh, I think for the long run, it's performant, it's a huge potential, uh, but we need to work with each community to adapt it properly to their needs, to their requirements, because this has to be useful to them. It is not to add some uh, 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 additional uh, uh, task to their work, but it is to ease their work. Uh, so we're working with Ocean Sites, with DBCP, with SOT, also uh, uh, to adapt our tools to their need. Thanks, Monsieur. So with the remaining time that we have, I'm going to dive into a number of the more specific questions that we've gotten um, a little bit in the order that we got them from. So Ruth Farr asks, actually, how do you register to log in to the site? Oh, it's uh, very simple. You you just ask, you click there, create an account, you create an account, and it's done. Now, if you right, want, to, if you want to modify, so you can do it yourself in a minute. Uh, uh, but if you want to register floats, weather station instruments, then you need to tell us that you are going to register drifters for Canada, and then we enable you this capacity quickly so you can write down elements into the Canada fleet of observing systems. And of course, you will not be able to modify the French one or, or vice versa. If you are maintaining a float, you will not modify a drifter. So just a question of rights. So it's quick. 
And uh, so that flows right into a question by Steve Jones. Um, you said that a lot of the metadata is supplied manually by by operators and by principal investigators. Is that something that's done typically in conjunction with data submission, or is that a separate flow into JCOMOPS? Normally, it's a separate flow because it depends, again, on the program. Uh, some program, as the Argo one, has a requirement to notify floats in advance. So even before putting the instrument in the ocean, you need to inform JCOMOPS. So even far before the data are released. So normally, ideally, as I said in the beginning, JCOMOPS want to monitor what is operating in the ocean and what will be operated tomorrow in the ocean. And we want to hear it from the responsible entity. We don't want to go to a GDAC or somewhere, take a look what is available. We just want to know by the best person what's going on. So we know it in advance. Sometimes we know it after, but we're definitely running in parallel of the data flow. We're part of the data flow. We are a quality control entity of the data flow. If we see that this platform has been identified as French, JCOMOPS can tell, no, it's Indonesian. It's not French, as an example. Uh, uh, no, it's not a marine mammals. It's a profiling float, because we know that because we Three different ways. So we're working in parallel. We are pretty well embedded, and I hope in the future we'll be totally uh, merged. I would say with with all the data flow. But some programs that have not yet developed metadata management, or that needs to modernize their metadata management, Ocean Sites is working on that. Ship observation team the moorings of the data book operation panel and the drifter, they have, they have directly asked JCOMOPS to take care of the management of the metadata. So we are part, we will be part of the overall data, metadata information flow. Uh, uh, and in the end, as I said, we are going to serve all these metadata integrated to WMO. So we are part of the overall data flow. We control it uh, and we improve it. And um, how often is the metadata updated? Uh, is that on a monthly basis, is it a daily basis? Or does that vary tremendously between the different networks? So it depends. Uh, <clears throat> I would take one network, and even in one network, you have very varied uh, practices. Uh, let's say someone is deploying hundreds instruments per year. This person is not going to go on the web field 100 times a form. So we have developed for these people the, the, the capacity to upload certain format, NetCDF, XML, CSV, whatever they have, actually. Uh, so they can submit this information more efficiently, and then we can check that. And so we have a number of control points into our system before accepting this information, but we can facilitate. If you deploy only one instrument per year, you can fill up a form in 10 minutes on the web. So the practice depends. I think the goal is to get the information there. We start manually, but the more machine-to-machine -machine system we can set up, uh, the more time will be saved for everyone, the less human we'll error will be made. Uh, so, yeah, I think that answers the question. But it's, Mathieu, it's yeah, I'm glad you kept going. It seems that we were cut off for a moment. Um, OK. So go uh, ahead. Uh, Ask yes, you ask the frequency. Uh, it's in real time. You see, India has just notified uh, a, a few a few deployments there. And before India, it would have been some cruises under through our Japanese uh, connection, some Chinese floats, some Talasa cruise plans. All that is made by the operators themselves. And then we have also routine daily hourly depends on the data source uh, that load bulk bulk of metadata into the system Matthew, can you hear me now yes sorry we had a network problem on our end uh, and we're cut off temporarily so i'm glad that you continued uh, answering questions okay. um let me let me just take we have only a minute left so i'll take uh, one last question here which is um from Richard Lemire, as a, as a federal U.S. employee, if I use any data from or metadata from JCOMOPS, do I have to have organizational permission or is just having the account sufficient? What kind of credit would you like if, if things are being used uh, in a different context? 
Well, I mean, we are promoting the free access to data information from the Global Ocean Observing System elements. So our information is also free and unrestricted uh, uh, in terms of availability. We'll appreciate a credit, uh, Jacob, up somewhere. But frankly, if you use a map uh, like these ones, I think uh, all our community knows who is building those maps. Uh, uh, and we are not here to promote ourselves. Jacob Ops is, is a tool. The star there uh, is the observing system, the elements, the scientist uh, 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 meteorologies behind. We are just a, a little facilitator there. Uh, uh, so we don't need to be uh, uh, promoted a lot, uh, I would say. A little credit will just ensure that the source is known, but uh, all we do is free. Our code, our products, uh, we share uh, uh, all we build. And so, no no worries on, the, on that end. All right, Mathieu, we've, we've run out of time, unfortunately, and we haven't been able to ask all the questions. So thank you to the audience for sticking with us, uh, for being uh, quite a few at this webinar. And I apologize for not having asked all of the questions. Mathieu, I'm sure, would be happy to answer questions he receives over email. So please continue that conversation. And uh, again, thank you, Mathieu, for the, the great presentation and the demonstration. Um, and uh, we really look uh, forward to continued innovation out of JCOMOPS. And I'd like to welcome you all to keep tuned to your email to see uh, the announcements of future Goose webinars. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Albert. Goodbye. Thank you, Mathieu. Bye-bye.